About a week and a half ago, there were mass shootings in two different parts of the country on the same day, one of them taking place in a Walmart. In the days that followed, a number of people were arrested for making terroristic threats on social media. I have some concerns about what exactly people are being arrested for. We need to look at the exact facts of each case individually. There's a very good article from NBC that describes a number of them. The article is entitled, Authorities Investigate Threats Across the Country After Mass Shootings. A Connecticut man is in custody for allegedly threatening Sunday's Puerto Rican Festival of New Haven, one of several similar threats in the U.S. Police in New Haven, Connecticut said they arrested a man overnight Friday on a charge of breach of the peace for allegedly posting a threat on Facebook against the Puerto Rican Festival of New Haven, which took place on Saturday. Police said the man, Jeffrey Hansen, 53, of the New Haven suburb of Orange, posted this week that the annual festival was why we need 30-round magazines. Hansen, who is scheduled to be arraigned on Monday, posted $50,000 bond on Saturday, NBC Connecticut reported. To me, that is not a terroristic threat, and it's not breach of peace. It's a nasty comment against a group of people. You might call it racist, you might call it hateful, but it's not, it's not an imminent threat, and it's not, it's not a plan. There's a quote from one of Shakespeare's plays. It's Henry VI, one of the characters says, First thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. I don't think the character is really planning on killing the lawyers. It's a joke. The audience laughs. He's not serious. Maybe he does have some animosity towards lawyers, and he is referencing killing them, which is pretty dark, I guess. But we all know he's not really going to do it. He's not really planning to do it. And I think that's what this is. He says we need 30-round magazines for these Puerto Rican festivals. It's not a nice thing to say, it's maybe racist, but it's not, it's not serious. So that's just one example of what was happening. Let's look at some of the other things that were going on. The incident was just one of several similar cases being investigated by law enforcement across the country. In Las Vegas, Connor Climo, 23, was charged with possession of illegal firearms and destructive devices on Friday. Federal prosecutors alleged that Klima was connected to white supremacists through encrypted online conversations and wanted to attack Jews and patrons of an LGBTQ bar. Now, as we've established in some of my previous videos, the term white supremacist is used rather broadly, so I can't be sure exactly what they mean by it here. I'm concerned that the police found that he was connected to them through encrypted online conversations, which means they were private conversations. So how did the police find out about this? According to charging documents, an FBI bomb technician found bomb making components and chemical compounds in Klimo's bedroom. Okay, if it looks like he was making bombs, yeah, that's illegal and I have some concerns about that, but I'm also worried about how exactly they got to this point. The ends don't justify the means. The fact that they identified somebody who was making a bomb, okay, that's good, but how did they get there? Did they violate rights to get there? In the United States, that's not okay. You can't violate people's rights even when in the end you discover they were doing something very illegal. In Toledo, Ohio, Timothy Ireland Jr., 41, was held on a $100,000 bond after he was charged Friday with making criminal threats against Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on Facebook. According to federal authorities, Ireland, who was arrested Thursday, posted, she should be shot, can't fire me, my employer would load the gun for me. I'm just not sure that's really a plan to kill somebody. It's a joke, maybe it's dark humor, maybe you don't like it. It's a joke that involves violence, but it doesn't look like an imminent threat. Prosecutors in Greene County, Missouri said Friday that Dmitry ooh, Andrechenko, 20, was charged with making a terrorist threat after he sparked a panic at a Walmart in Springfield on Thursday. Police said in court documents that 
Andrechenko walked into the store wearing a ballistic vest and carrying an AR-style rifle, and that he told police he wanted to see whether the retailer honored the Second Amendment. All right, this one is a little different. He's not posting jokes on social media. He actually walked into the Walmart shortly after a Walmart had been shot up elsewhere, and he was wearing a bulletproof vest and he was carrying a rifle. I think that is getting akin to, you can't shout fire in a crowded theater. He either knew or should have known that when he did that, it would cause a panic. That is more like an imminent threat. He's walking in there, he's holding the weapon that he could use to kill people. He's wearing a protective vest, which sort of suggests that he's ready for action. That looks more like an imminent threat. So I think I'm with the police on that one. That's a little bit different from making jokes on Facebook. In Orange County, Florida, Richard Dean Clayton, 26, of Winter Park, was held on $15,000 bond after he was arrested Friday night on a charge of making written threats to kill or do bodily harm in a joint investigation by the FBI and the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Authorities say Clayton made a threat on Facebook on Tuesday that said, three more days of probation left, then I get my AR-15 back, don't go to Walmart next week. Even though it does look like a joke to me, it still has some more specifics. He's saying where he's going to go, maybe not the specific Walmart, but that he's going to a Walmart, he says next week. It looks a little bit more like a plan. I think for that one, I'm gonna err on the side of agreeing with the police that at the very least, they should arrest him and do an investigation. It's just getting a little more specific than some of the other things we're seeing. Even so, I think, he should probably be found innocent in the end. It's just not specific enough. However, that one, I'll agree, that's a little more gray than some of the others. Michigan State Police said Paul Norgiel, 52, was arrested Thursday on a felony charge of making a terroristic threat in Armada, north of Detroit. Authorities told NBC affiliate WDIV of Detroit that Norgiel, a custodian at Armada Elementary School, was arrested after a witness said the custodian claimed that he was bored and should go to a local business with an AK model rifle and 12 rounds of ammunition. State troopers said they found a semi-automatic long gun and a pistol in Norgiel's home. That just looks like a joke. It just looks like a joke. I don't think he's serious. Police in West Laco, Texas, near Brownsville on Thursday, arrested a 13-year-old boy on a juvenile felony charge of making a terroristic threat in a joint investigation with the FBI. Police said the boy posted a threat on social media against a Walmart store. NBC affiliate KVEO of Brownsville reported that the store was evacuated and closed late Wednesday after alarmed customers called the store and 911 operators to report a social media threat reading, about to ruin my life murdering people that all I can do in life. For this one, I agree with the decision to arrest. About to ruin my life murdering people really says this is an imminent threat. He's going to go out and he's going to kill people. He's a 13-year-old boy, so hopefully they'll put him into some mental health therapy and not send him to prison. They caught it in time, but I, I agree with them on this one for the arrest there. Police in Harlingen, Texas, said they arrested a man on a charge of making a terrorist threat early Saturday after he posted a threat on social media against the town's Walmart store. The man, who wasn't identified, warned that the attack would take place on Sunday, police said. He was jailed pending an arraignment. I don't know exactly what he said. It looks like they don't have the details on that. But if he gave a specific location and a specific date, that sounds like plans to do the attack. That sounds like a terrorist threat. Some of those examples look like jokes that people are being arrested for, and some of those examples look like real threats. I'm worried about both. Let's talk about the former one first. People say all of the time in the course of normal conversation things like, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to beat that guy's ass, I'm going to burn the whole thing to the ground. We see these things to express emphatically our frustration with something. It's it's a means of expression. It's actually a very common means of expression. We all do it. We don't really mean that we're gonna kill the other person, we're gonna beat that person up, or we're gonna burn anything. We don't really mean it. This is just a normal part of the language and conversation. And I think 
this heightened nervousness is being used as a way to target conservatives. It's almost as though people are waiting for them to use that common means of language to accuse the person of planning an actual violent act. We all need to be aware of the fact that this is occurring because I think we all have to start being very, very careful about what we are saying on social media. There are people out there that are ready to pounce on an offhand comment that you didn't really mean and you could wind up being arrested. And as we saw in the article, your politics may come into the court case. Be aware of that, be very careful. It's not fair, it's not right, but it's the reality of where we are in the West right now and you need to be super, super careful. In regard to the threats that appear to be real, that is also disconcerting for obvious reasons. I don't want people going out and committing random acts of mass violence against innocent people in public places. I don't want them committing particular acts of violence against individuals. I just don't want the violence. I know a lot of you are frustrated right now. You want to start taking action. You want to start planning action. Don't, you are just going to get arrested. That is not going to do anybody any good, least of all you. Don't go out and do something. Don't start planning to do something. As we can see in that article, social media is being carefully monitored and it looks like sometimes they're going into people's private conversations. They shouldn't be doing that, it's illegal, but it's happening. If they think that somebody's a threat, they can go get a court order to do surveillance that normally they wouldn't be allowed to do. They can use your social media posts to go and get that court order. I think as this problem gets worse and worse, it's gonna be easier and easier for the FBI to get those court orders and start reading your private emails. You really can't plan anything. We live in a surveillance state, please don't. Use your energy towards a more positive direction. Start collecting food supplies, start figuring out how you're going to purify your water. Go out and meet some like-minded people. If you really want to spend some of your energy, go to some of the protests, maybe join the Proud Boys or Patriot Prayer. Go out and peacefully protest. But whatever you do, do not engage in acts of violence, do not threaten acts of violence, and do not plan acts of violence. You will get caught by the FBI. We live in a surveillance state. You will be arrested, and that is not going to help you or anybody else. That's all for today.